don't blow on your brush, please. It's just, you might as well just blow your nose on there, okay? This is sad. Like I've just applied for a role in Dynasty. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about blush. Everything you need to know, all your questions answered about blush. Placement, formula, colors, what you could apply it with, absolutely everything. For those of you who are new in here, hi, my name is Andrea Ali. I'm a professional makeup artist based in Paris. Here you can see my latest work with Vogue Paris on Natalia Vodianova for Loro Piana. A little bit of bragging never hurt anybody, right? Subscribe to this channel if you want to know more about makeup, techniques. Now let's get into the blush. Blush, just like any other complexion product, has to be tailored to your own needs. Let's think about what is blush supposed to be doing to our skin. So it's not about creating the same effect that we usually have when, you know, we're blushing. I don't know about you, but uh, when I'm blushing, it's starting from my ears. <laughs> I can feel my ears getting hot and then all the blood flow in my face and I get red like a tomato. That's not what you want to try to achieve with blush. What you're trying to get with a blush, it's like a natural flush in the skin, as if you were at the mountains, as, as if you had like a, like a short run and like fresh air. This is the type of result that you want to get when you're using blush. And I know that some people just stay away from blush still because of, you know, the 80s where women used to apply a lot of blush. Um, nobody wants that anymore, I think. How should you pick the right texture and the right color for you? First, you have to determine the type of skin that you have, your skin condition, which is normal combination oily, because that will determine the type of formula that you need when it comes to the blush. Do you need a cream formula, a stain, a liquid, or a powder formula? And then you have to determine the tone and the undertone of your skin. The tone, like I said many times, is the intensity of your skin, fair, light, medium, medium, dark, and so on and so forth. And the undertone is warm undertone, cool undertone, or neutral undertone. That being said, when you check, you know, all these criteria that describe your skin, you, it should be easy. So let's start with textures and colors. If you have dry skin, obviously I would suggest you to go to more towards either cream or liquid formulas. So now we'll give you uh, an example. So I've got here a, a whole drawer of my favorite blushes. A really, really nice formula for dry skin would be Glossier Cloud Paint. This is a really really good product it really feels like a little cloud I've never touched a cloud but it feels like it would have this type of consistency like it's so soft and it blends so easily you and you could apply it with your fingers my favorite colors uh, would be dusk and then sometimes I like to mix it with a little bit of puff as you can see these are pretty used. Um, I don't have a lot of product in these. This is Dusk. And as you can see, it's a very, very soft color and the consistency, it's creamy, but not overly hydrating and not overly dewy. So these are great if you have dry skin, if you are mature, if you have mature skin as well. And we're going to talk about application a little bit later, okay? Another product that you could use if you have dry or normal skin is this Ilia Color Haze Multi-Use Pigment. I have this in two colors. The color Waking Up is my favorite. It looks very, very similar with Dusk from Glossier. And then I have this color that's called Sing. Now this is the type of product you can see has quite a lot of pigment. It can be used all over the face as a blush, on your eyelids, or even on your lip to create that monochromatic look. In comparison with Glossier, this will dry um, a little bit more matte and it will last longer than Glossier. Another product that I absolutely love, absolutely love, would be um, the Cream Blush from Fenty. I've been talking about this many, many times because it's an amazing formula, very, very creamy, that 
can be applied on top of your foundation or on bare skin. Like you don't have to necessarily have anything on your skin for this product to look beautiful. Again, this is for dry or normal or even combination skin. I would not use this on oily skin. It's just my personal advice. Now let's talk about combination and oily skin. Combination skin usually is very oily on the T-zone. Oily skin is oily everywhere, including the cheeks. That's the big difference. So that will determine the type of product you're going to use. If you have oily skin, I would suggest even if this is a liquid product, I would suggest a product like NARS Liquid Blush because these guys just, they last so, so well. And if you have oily skin, don't forget that applying a cream product will never work on its own or a liquid product. You have to come and set it with powder. You could apply a powder blush or you could just apply regular translucent powder to set that product in. This is the blush and you'll see now the color payoff is just crazy. It's really 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 crazy and this has a um, beautiful finish. It dries, it does not stay wet and dewy so that's why I suggest you to use it if it, even if you have uh, oily skin. Honestly, this product would work for any type of skin, but I know that oily skin sometimes wants to use more creamy products, so this would be a great option for you. For oily skin and for combination skin, I also recommend the Laura Mercier blushes. These are amazing. The colors that are available are just beautiful. The color payoff is fantastic. It's so easy to blend. They're just the perfect blushes. This one I dropped a little compromised. Uh, it's in the color strawberry. Like we will talk about colors in a second. We are still at textures. Honestly, this next product that I'm going to talk about can be used by every single skin type out there, but especially for oily and combination skin, which normally are the type of skins that will dissolve the products. This minimalist whipped powder blush, you guys. It's like a super nice, moussey texture. It's very delicate. It has the most beautiful finish, like golden finish. I absolutely love this product. Another blush that I really like for really all skin types, but especially, you know, combination and oily skin would be these ones from oops, KVD. Very, very easy to blend. Um, they're super pigmented. Dior has amazing blushes as well. Incredibly soft on the skin even if you have you know this color in the pan when you're going to apply it they're absolutely gorgeous gorgeous and now let's talk about color if you're a fair skin tone and you have neutral or cool undertone i would suggest you to uh, apply colors like this this will look good on you this is the type of color for example that would look absolutely horrible on me because i've got warm undertone and i'm more like light medium this is in rose baiser uh, from dior and you can see it's a beautiful soft pink more like a cool tone pink it will look good on you if you're the type of person who has very very blonde hair very blue eyes very light skin then if you are light skin tone neutral or warm uh, undertone this type of color will look just gorgeous on you this is strawberry and actually this this color in particular looks good on many, many, many skin tones. And just in comparison with this, I want you to see the difference. So this is definitely the one from Dior is more cool tone. This has a little bit more warmth to it and a little bit more, it's a bit more saturated. I think the more, like the darker your skin is, you could use colors that are just a little bit more saturated, that have that bit of a vibrance to them. Then if you're a light to medium skin tone with like warm 
undertone. This would look good on you. Uh, again, it's from Dior, number 136. As you can see, it's a super pretty peach. It has a little bit of pink to it, but not too much. And yeah, if, and if you have warm undertone and light to medium skin, this will look good on you. If you are medium, medium deep, this is the type of color that would look good on you. This is 999 from Dior. Now, all of these colors that I'm talking about, they're not like a rule, okay? There could be exceptions and there are exceptions. And these are just recommended colors for you, okay? So don't take it like that's the only color that I could use. Uh, but this is really, really pretty. It will look amazing on darker skin. Really a beautiful color. This is also a beautiful color for more like medium, medium dark skin tone. It has a lot of warmth, a lot of color. It's very saturated. Now let's talk about application because I'm sure you're here to know about how to apply the blush. When it comes to cream blushes, obviously you could apply it with your finger, but I find that it's actually much, much easier if you use a sponge. If you use Beauty Blender or just any makeup sponge, uh, especially the hydrophilic one, the one that double its size when you put it under the water, that type of sponge is like the best for cream and liquid applications. With the finger, especially if you apply the blush on top of your foundation, you are risking to just grab, to lift the foundation underneath. So I strongly advise you, uh, unless you obviously have a safe hand, use a beauty blender, use a beauty sponge to apply your cream blush. Now let me show you exactly how to apply it. Let's take a cream blush, a, a really great color that I love, love, love is Petal Poppin from Fenty. This color is really, really beautiful and it looks good if you are light to like almost medium skin tone. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I squeeze my sponge. This one is from By Terry. I load the sponge with product get the excess off on the back of your hand. Here's where we are talking about placement. It's different for everybody. I know a lot of people would uh, use that rule where you're like smiling and then you apply it on the cheek, but then when you're serious, your cheek would get a little bit lower, right? That's not a good way to apply blush. It's just not. I'm sorry. It might work if you're 16 and your cheeks are very high no matter what you're laughing or not but if you are over 25 or over 30 that trick might not work for you the higher your blush is i think the more youthful you will look so if you have a very long face it will really look good on you if you apply the blush like right in the middle of your cheek if you have round face if you have more like square face the blush will look better if you apply it a bit higher the placement for myself it's gonna be here i don't know if you could tell it's like right here this is the top of my cheek and i do very small bouncing motions like so never apply your blush on top of powder so if you've applied foundation and you want to apply cream blush, do that first and then apply powder. When you apply your blush with a sponge, I promise you, it, it's almost like it's blending it for you. So strongly suggest you to use this if you are planning to apply a cream or a liquid blush. Now let me show you how to not apply blush. Okay, I'm going to take a a color that is honestly too strong for me. I can make it work, but it's definitely way too saturated and a bit too dark for my skin tone. So I'm gonna take this with a brush. I know that powder blush is something that most of you would use, right? Usually people blow on their... Don't blow on your brush, please. It's just You might as well just blow your nose on there, okay? Like, don't do that. And then, right? Wait, this is way too much. Wait, 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 wait. Nobody does that. Let me correct this. That's more likely what people are doing, like this. And then you go like this, right? 
almost like on the contour line. Now you could see that when I smile, it's actually quite cute from certain angles, like it's not bad, right? But if I'm serious, it just got lower. Not only that, this color makes me look like I am frustrated and like I've just applied for a role in Dynasty, but it also like makes me sad. Like it makes my whole cheek drop. And I have common sense in here, like in the way I've applied it, because I've seen much, much worse than this. Like people literally applying the blush like right here. And then you're like wondering what is going on? Like why isn't the blush looking beautiful on you? It's because you've placed it wrong. It's because you've used probably the wrong color. And also you probably applied it with the wrong thing. My brush was clean, but you guys, I cannot even begin to tell you how important it is when your brush is clean if you apply a powder blush. Please clean your brushes. It's that one thing that you have to do once a week if you care for your makeup to look good and for your skin to be healthy. So yeah, this is sad. Now let me talk about tricky blushes. So this is a very tricky blush, okay? It's a beautiful color, but what do we notice? It's shimmery. It doesn't have the shine from a creamy product. It actually has shimmer in it. Now, why is this a tricky product? Unless you are an MBHB, which is modelesque beauty human being, this blush would probably not look good on you because of its texture. If you are like me, which is BHB, beautiful human being, there's no abbreviation like that, just made that up. Honestly, why would this look bad on me because I've got really large pores. Um, I've, I Obviously, I'm surrounded with beautiful, amazing quality light, so you don't really see it. But in real life, I'm being honest with you, I've got very, very large pores in this area in between my eyebrows and on my chin. So when I apply this type of blush on my skin, it just looks very, very weird. And I'm going to prove it to you. So let's take a clean brush, even if it's on the wrong side. I'm gonna take this brush. I'm not gonna blow on it. And then if I apply it in here, again, where, you know, people tell you that's where blush is supposed to be. I mean, I don't know if you guys can tell, but can you get closer? But it just emphasizes all my pores and my imperfections in here. So whenever you're going to apply a shimmery blush, especially in this area, okay, and then you go like this, this is going to make, it's going to emphasize, highlight all the imperfections in your skin. This is the type of product that can be used on someone with really, really beautiful skin or like someone with very young skin with no imperfections because, you know, when you don't have a lot of texture in your skin, literally anything works on you, right? This is a joke, okay? Can we agree? Joke. You're being serious, responsible, you love beauty, but you're not overwhelmed by it. Now, we talked about what you could apply uh, the cream blush or the liquid blush, but let's talk about what you could apply your powder blush with. And I know this looks very cartoonish right now, but I'm going to continue talking like this because I need to take my thumbnail pictures, okay? Here I gathered a few brushes, although they are mostly used, so they, they have product in them. But these are the type of brushes that I would use to apply blush. This is a 05 brush from Refer. This is a Locket Powder brush from Kat Von D, um, but you will find it with a black handle. Amazing brush for so many other steps, not just for blush, but it has like the perfect shape to apply the blush with. Another one from Refer is 04. Again, it's like super, super nice. Laura Mercier has a really, really nice brush for blush as well. And then I also like this Misa. This, uh, sometimes I use it for bronzer. Sometimes I would use it for a blush. It really depends, uh, of course, on the size of your face. Let's be realistic. I have a very, very small face and I need smaller brushes. If you have a little bit a bigger face, this will be great for you, not just for blush, but also for bronzer. Now, the reason why you do not want brushes like this one right here, it's because 
obviously it's so big so when you're going to apply whatever blush you want to apply it's going to spread on a much bigger space than what you want to stay away from from these brushes when it comes to your powder blush let's just say that the blush on you disappears very very fast i don't care if you have dry normal combination or oily skin but let's just say your blush disappears so here's what i suggest you could apply First, a cream product that you could press with your beauty sponge and then you could set it with a powder blush. It could be in the same family of colors or it could be slightly different. Like sometimes I like to apply first a more like a warm, like a soft peachy blush and then on top of it to apply something that's a bit more pink it creates a beautiful beautiful color on your cheeks for example now i'm going to apply rose from laura mercier and i will take this brush which is from misa 004 brush i load my brush with product and then i slowly tap it on top of wherever i've applied my cream blush this will give it a little bit more intensity and it will also give longevity to your makeup i promise you if you apply a cream blush and then a powder blush it will look amazing all day long especially if you're taking pictures or a video so you see how beautiful and how it lifted my cheek this type of application and also this color complements my skin tone do not forget that the last thing that you apply on your face will be the first thing that comes off so applying a pinch more blush it is no problem but this is too much okay what you need to remember from this video just like you do with foundation concealer highlighter bronzer blush has to be tailored to your own needs to your own face to your own skin condition to your own skin color tone and undertone so you cannot uh, see a blush on someone and be like oh what blush did you use unless they have similar skin tones with you let me know in the comments please what information did i skip if you want to know anything else because i'm pretty sure that i might have skipped something when it comes to blush i see your comments even if i do not reply to you immediately thank you so much for watching please hit on that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already press on the like button to know that you enjoy this video follow me on instagram i'm sharing so many tips and tricks and make up those on stories as well thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one bye laura mercier has a really really nice blush for brush i could play a role in dynasty what do you think